Hi there, we're from Exeter Community Energy. I'm Tara Bowers and my colleague Rory is here joining me today. We're going to be telling you a little bit about our energy advice services and retrofitting advice services that we offer uh, within Exeter Community Energy as part of the Renting Minefield uh, uh, event that Exeter City Council have organised. So thanks to Exeter City Council for inviting us. We've put together a slideshow which is going to just go through some brief details of what we do. So I'm going to share my screen now and then both Rory and I will uh, talk you through the services we, we have on offer. So this is what we're going to go through today, a um, little bit about who Exeter Community Energy is and what we do and why it's important to retrofit homes and a little bit about grants and finance available. And then lastly, I'll give you some information about help we have for your tenants. So what is Exeter Community Energy or ECO as we like to be known? Well, we're a community benefit society that was formed in 2014 and we're run by voluntary directors. There are 10 of us. And basically our aim is to uh, run energy related projects for a sustainable future. And those projects are for the benefit of our community and obviously aim to tackle climate change. And most importantly for us at the moment, we're also looking at promoting energy efficiency and some of that work helps to address fuel poverty. One of our first projects is solar PV. We have rooftop projects around Exeter City and a few other places um, outside of Exeter. Currently we have 10 community owned solar rooftops. And when I talk about community owned solar, that is literally owned by individual members in the community. Uh, investors pool their money and we run the projects. The people that own or rent those buildings uh, benefit from cheap electricity and we sell any excess generation from the solar panels to the grid and the profits from that come back to us which we then disperse to those community owners by way of a dividend um, currently of five percent is what we pay annually on their investment and any surplus we use for our other projects. Uh, we have solar uh, panels on a number of properties in Exeter for example Exeter College and the library and some community centres. You can find more details about that project on our website. So some of the surplus that we have from those projects goes into a community fund, which is then used to spread wider benefit to the community. Each year we have a pot of money available, which local projects can apply for um, by way of grant. And we like to support projects that also help to save energy out there in the community or tackle other um, aspects of fuel poverty or social injustice. And again, you can find out more about that on our website. And our next round of community funds um, is about to be launched. So keep an eye out for that in the local newspapers in case you know anybody that might like to apply for a grant this year. Another one of our big projects is Healthy Homes for Wellbeing, and that's a free energy advice service. We cover five districts in Devon, that's Exeter, Mid Devon, East Devon, Teambridge and Torbay. And we currently have six home energy advisors working across those regions. And I'm gonna be giving you some more details about that towards the end of this presentation. But before I do that, I'm gonna pass over to Rory, who's gonna to talk to you in some detail about retrofitting and why it's a good idea. Thanks, Tara. Um, my name uh, is Rory McNeil. I'm uh, involved as a director with the retrofit uh, aspect of ECO's activities. Uh, my experience is based on uh, a deep retrofit project on my own home and more recently the uh, project management of an energy efficient community centre in Exeter. I'm currently undertaking the AECB or Association of Environmentally Conscious Builders uh, retrofit, carbon light retrofit course. Uh, and my aim is to um, be part of a team that can offer advice to homeowners who are interested in 
retrofitting, uh, and that's for the purpose of energy efficiency, energy efficient retrofit uh, to their own homes. It's a complicated area, it's rapidly developing, uh, and we want to support people with an interest and indeed motivate people to, uh, to take on uh, domestic retrofit. Um, next slide, please. Um, the main aim of this is uh, really, uh, the realistic aim I think is to reduce carbon footprint of existing housing stock by 50% or more. Um, that's obviously part of a much broader effort that's necessary in the next 10 to 20 years if, um, if we're going to reduce to net, uh, net, carbon, uh, net zero carbon uh, by uh, 2040. Um, the main routes to that uh, in terms of domestic retrofit are in the first case um, offering effective energy assessment it's very important to understand the position the current building or property is in. Uh, following that, identify possible improvements and then advise on pathways to the installation of uh, whatever the plan is. Next slide, please, Tara. And why, why is retrofitting a good idea? Well, I suppose primarily from the householder's point of view, it's reduction in energy bills uh, and improved EPC, and that's closely uh, related to improved habitability uh, and aspects of health and well-being. Um, beyond that, contributing to the reduction in carbon footprint, and it's the decarbonisation aspects of retrofit which are an important, uh, important strand. Uh, and in terms of uh, the, uh, the rental market, potentially longer tenancy. So just a, a little bit in terms of what retrofit standards are out there. Uh, I think many people will have heard of passive house uh, and that can be quantified in terms of specific space heat demand. That's the amount of energy being put in uh, per meter squared per annum. Uh, and the example there, passive house uh, requires to meet a 15 kilowatt uh, uh, hours per meter squared per annum figure. Uh, th there's another standard ENERFIT, which has emerged in the last few years, and that aims to achieve 25 uh, kilowatt hours. Carbon light silver is uh, perhaps uh, a more achievable, more readily achievable standard, and that aims for uh, 40. And to set that into context, uh, you can see on the slide that the average existing housing stock uh, is um, uh, assessed to have a, a, a a specific space heat demand of between 120 and 150 uh, kilowatt hours per meter squared. So you can see that uh, achieving uh, those uh, those better standards is ambitious, uh, but of course that's what will eventually bring about the savings, uh, both in terms of uh, cost and uh, carbon footprint. Thanks, Tara. So the principles of fab uh, uh, the principles of of retrofit really are driven by the mantra fabric first. So rather than worrying too much about uh, the inputs, the energy inputs into a property, uh, the first areas to address are uh, insulation. And I think uh, most of the, the current housing stock uh, is already fairly well equipped in terms of loft and, and roof insulation, uh, but it's walls and floor that are obviously important as well. Um, in terms of wall insulations, uh, internal wall insulation is an option uh, at the cost of internal space to some extent. Um, external wall insulation is another route to go down, uh, which obviously doesn't impact internal space, um, but may have uh, other aspects uh, that make it uh, a, a challenge. Um, alongside the insulation, improved windows and doors are important. And really the point is that as well as insulation and reducing heat loss, uh, an important aspect of this is improved air tightness or managed ventilation, because it's no good having um, structural uh, or the fabric of the building that uh, is well insulated if the airflow through the building is, is unmanaged and the heat in the building is lost too quickly. 
So improved air tightness and managed ventilation is a very important aspect. And that also relates to one of the key challenges of insulation, uh, which is ensuring that um, moisture is properly managed so that there isn't a buildup of, of moisture leading to issues of mold uh, and uh, poor habitability. So those, those two aspects of insulation and ventilation go very much hand in hand and are the essence of the, uh, the, the focus on fabric first. Once those aspects have been addressed, then it's a question of looking at the inputs. Uh, and obviously, for those on the gas network, then improved gas boilers and making sure that a, the most efficient uh, modern energy efficient gas boilers are fitted as a starting point. Uh, and associated with that might well be the radiators. Um, air conditioning units are another possibility or uh, the addition of underfloor heating. And then the uh, sort of final layer, if you like, is to ensure that you, the energy inputs are as based on renewable sources as much as possible. Uh, solar PV and solar thermal uh, are quite, uh, quite commonly uh, used these days and uh, very much at the heart of uh, what ECO's uh, activity has been to date. Air source heat pumps and ground source heat pumps uh, again have been around for a while but again are emerging as um, more, more possible technologies and more affordable technologies. Um, and finally biomass boilers again all these are possibilities but uh, the exact solutions for any given property uh, are going to be a, a quite a complicated, sophisticated calculation. Thanks, Rory. So, um, yeah, so obviously there's lots of work that can be done to many properties, um, particularly in, in some of our more rural areas of Devon. And the question leads to how are we going to fund some of this work? So I just wanted to give you some brief details about some of the funding options currently available. So first of all, there's eco funding, which is energy company obligation. Now, this is based on the occupant's uh, circumstances and eco funding is available to uh, residents who are on benefits, a low income or with health conditions. And we can actually organise this funding via our Healthy Homes project, which I'll explain a bit more about shortly. But uh, if you have tenants that are on benefits or with uh, serious health conditions, then it could be that eco funding is a way for us to help you with some of these retrofitting options that you might need to do to your properties. There's also the Green Homes Grant that's been uh, launched this year by the government. Um, I've put the web link here on this slide for you to take a look at. Um, I'm sure some of you have probably already had a good look at this option for, for funding. And basically you can apply for a voucher for up to £5,000 towards both primary and secondary measures as listed on that website page that I've given you there. And the voucher can cover up to two thirds of the cost of the work. You might also be interested to read a blog that appears on our website that's recently been written by one of our other directors, Alistair Mumford, who goes into some detail about uh, the problems that are being faced within this grant situation where there's a lack of installers available. Um, so uh, that makes an interesting read if you've got the time to have a look at that. There's also some extra funding available through local authority delivery um, under the Green Homes Grant and Devon um, were lucky enough to be uh, successful with a bid under this local authority delivery. And in this first round, uh, De Devon County Council are working with four community energy groups, um, ECO being one of them. And this first round is, is working with owner occupiers um, only, but I'm sure in future rounds of this funding, uh, it will become open to private landlords and private tenants as well. So keep an eye out for future developments around this and um, maybe sign up to our newsletter to be kept informed about developments in this funding route. Then aside from grant funding, obviously there's traditional forms of finance, um, either through your own funds or through bank finance. And I just also wanted to let you know about Lendology. Um, again, some of you might have heard of Lendology before. It, until recently, it was called Wessex Resolutions. And Lendology charity that lends um, a pot of money that's funded by the councils. 
and I, I do know that they do lend to uh, private landlords. So if you were looking to improve your properties in some way and you wanted to borrow some money at a reasonable rate, then it's worth having a chat with Lendology. And the web link there is again um, for your reference. Um, do give them a call and chat through your needs. I'm sure they'll be able to help. So that's kind of a nutshell around uh, retrofitting as a general topic and the finance available. And I wanted to just now tell you a little bit about what we can do to help your tenants via our Healthy Homes for Wellbeing project. So this project's been going since 2017. And as I mentioned earlier, we've got six advisors and the, the service is completely free. It's a free energy and money serving, saving advice. And we are also the LEAP partners. You may have heard of LEAP. It's a national scheme, stands for Local Energy Advice Partnership. And we work with them to deliver their service, which is a mixture of telephone advice and home visits to eligible customers. So we ourselves at ECO can help anybody at all, anyone that wants to contact us for energy or money saving advice or energy efficiency advice or retrofit advice. But for anybody that wants the LEAP service, there is an eligibility to meet. And you can check out the LEAP website at the bottom of this slide for that eligibility. But basically it's any benefit um, at all, including child benefit or low income. And on the LEAP website, there is a, a table uh, uh, detailing what the low income thresholds are for family sizes or any health condition. And that um, includes uh, asthma, diabetes, arthritis, because the LEAP project is aiming to help anybody whose uh, health conditions might be exacerbated by cold or damp homes, or who might be struggling to heat their homes sufficiently due to lack of income. So there's a big list on the LEAP website as to who might qualify for that. Um, if you feel your tenants would qualify from a LEAP um, full energy assessment or home visit, then you can either contact us direct with the details I've shown on this slide, or you can contact LEAP. If your tenants don't qualify for LEAP, then feel free to pass them our free phone number anyway, and we'll be able to help them in some form with their energy needs. The kind of things we help with, um, as discussed already, is grants for heating and insulation. We can access the eco grants and we work with a number of eco installers in the area. We'll go through a big range of energy saving advice and tips, and also we include water saving advice as part of that. We can certainly have with, help with tariff checking or switching and many uh, people particularly those on low incomes or with vulnerabilities, find it very hard to work out which energy supplier to be with or which tariffs to choose. Um, as we're doing this day in, day out, we can certainly help with those choices. And similarly, we can help with discounts. There are a number of discounts available to low income families. One is the warm home discount, which is available on electricity accounts. Southwest Water also offers some discounts for certain benefits. And of course, there's council tax reductions. And we can help with all of those. We also do a lot of work around billing and meter problems. Um, you'll be surprised at the level of billing issues there are out there. We, we get at least five or six a week to try and sort out for people where bills have been done wrong by energy companies, either the wrong rates or the wrong meter readings, um, or something's just gone terribly wrong with payments. And then we're here to help sort out those problems. We can also help with smart meters. That's both with uh, advice about how they work and why they're a good idea. And also by showing people how to get the best from their smart meters. We'll also organize benefit checks or debt help if people need that kind of help. And if we do a leap home visit, we can also fit what we call our easy measures. And that's uh, LED lighting. We'll change any old style light bulbs to LEDs for free. We can fit draft proofing. We have things like radiator panels, um, gadgets such as TV standby plugs, and all of these things are supplied for free to the tenant if they need them. Obviously, we do a lot of work around signposting. If there's things that we can't help with, we'll make sure that the tenant is put in touch with someone who can help them. And it's important also to know at this time, um, particularly in view of uh, redundancies and people having their hours cut with their jobs 
we are also able to access a number of hardship and crisis funds, which can help alleviate immediate um, situations of poverty. So just to reiterate again, our service is completely free. Anybody can contact us for help. And um, based on the last three years of activity, our average saving per household is about 800 pounds. So, um, you know, feel free to keep sharing our details with um, anyone you know, that's friends and family, and as well as your tenants. And obviously you yourself might also like some help from us at some point. I thought I'd also just share a little bit of information about some other activities we've got on going on at the moment. Um, we've actually got a retrofit webinar on the 18th of November at seven o'clock where we've got some experts joining us to talk again about green retrofits. So you might like to sign up for that. You can do that via our website. It's, um, it's free of charge again. And you might just find that a bit more useful um, around retrofit as we'll be going into a lot more detail about specific retrofit options. We've also got a webinar on the 27th of November about fuel poverty when Ben Bradshaw MP of Exeter is joining us to talk about the issues people in fuel poverty face. Um, it's very high levels of fuel poverty in Devon, more than one in 10 households face fuel poverty. So we'll be talking about that in some detail. We've also recently launched our latest winter warmth appeal. And again, you can find out more about that on our website. Uh, the winter warmth appeal is a a campaign to ask for donations to help people who are in fuel poverty this winter and because we're a not-for-profit organization and community-based I can assure you that every donation is that is made is used directly to help those people in need it doesn't get used by us for any other reason um, there's another website I've added here the big energy saving winter website that's a winter scheme that the government are running around big energy saving network um, this year they've launched a new website and it, I had a look at it just this week and it's quite useful. It's a nice one to share with tenants um, just as a, a, a general idea about how they might save some money this winter. And again, I've just added our social media contacts here and our website. Feel free to join up to our newsletter to be kept informed of our events and our projects. And we'd really like to hear from you with any queries you have or any information that you might need from us. I'll just finish up here with a slide with our contact details on. Um, you can contact either myself or Rory at any time. There's a free phone number that you can ring on, or you can contact me at healthyhomes at eco.org.uk or Rory at retrofit at eco.org.uk. So that's it from us for today. We look forward to speaking to you again and um, Hope you've enjoyed this little bit of information we've been able to share with you. Thanks very much.